a whole building for stuff that has nothing to do with the actual education? I guess it's necessary for a place like this. I walk in hoping that this really will be a quick visit like the teacher said. On a white door on the left is a green cross with the text head nurse and a nameplate. A voice from the inside responds to my knock almost immediately but I can't quite make it out. It sounded a bit like an invitation to open the door so I invite myself further in. The room is not large and it smells strange. A friendly looking man turns around in his office chair to face me as I enter. His desk is neat and tidy, but the bin under the table is overflowing with used medical utensils, and there are at least a dozen coffee cup rings lingering on the desk. Hello there. What can I do for you today? He is young looking and sort of rugged, but the dimples in his cheeks wash that impression away when he smiles. Am are you the nurse? He smiles like a person who had heard this very same question hundreds of times. Well, yes, I am. It says someone I don't know. You can call me by my name or just the nurse, like everyone else. Of course, I shake off my confusion, realizing I probably should grab his extended hand. His handshake was rather firm and friendly. Right, er, uh, I'm a new student at my homeroom tea. And my homeroom teacher told me to come and meet you. My name is Hasao Naki Nakai. His eyes light up with re revelation and he snaps his fingers. Oh, you're that Naki. I was just reading a file in the morning. Why is he blushing? Why are you blushing? Stop it. That's disturbing to me. Some kind of chronic ahim uh, uh, hypnia? and related congenital heart muscle deficiency, right? He gestures me to sit down in a vacant armchair in front of his desk. Eh, uh, yes? Good. Well, we'll probably be... You've probably been briefed about the school enough, so I'll just go over this quickly. We have all kinds of faculties available. Mostly physical therapy and such. There's always someone from my staff around, even at night, so n never hesitate to call us if there is trouble. There is a problem. The famous 24-hour nursing staff. Well, this is like a hospital. Well, not exactly. For instance, we don't do brain surgery here. His joke feels so out of place that I'm left thinking why he even said it. Yeah, just that it's really weird to have so many medical people at a school. Go get used to it. I'm not so sure of that myself, but I don't want I don't let this nurse know. Now let me just find your file again. While I searches for something from his computer and shuffles stacks of paper around, I let my gaze wander around the room. It's the epitome of generic, I'd like to say. Beige walls and ceiling, dark gray, laminate flooring, and all the equipment you expect from a nurse, o a school nurse's office. Even the ridiculous educational posters are hanging at all four walls, reminding me of eating, to, reminding me to eat properly three times a day, and from all the food groups. Smiling, the nurse draws a thick file from the stack of sim. sim Similarly thick files and opens it. So you already had medication for the arrhythmia. Just remember to take your pills every morning and evening, or it won't be much help. Apart from that, do you have any? Do you do any sports? Rush stuff like I don't know boxing. Rash stuff. Sorry. He grins to his own joke, but I don't. Uh, well, I played soccer occasionally with some classmates. Alright, I'm afraid I'm going to have to recommend you frame from doing that. At least for the time being. Oh. My lack of reaction makes him raise an eyebrow, but really, I'm not too bothered by him forbidding me to kick a ball around. I guess I never did it out of burning passion for the sport, just to have something to do. Any kind of, um, cons... Oh, 
Ooh, that hurt. Ow. Confusion might be very dangerous for your, to your heart. And risk another attack it is not a good idea. And risking another attack is not a good idea. Was the previous one caused by a sudden cons cons confusion? Concession? I don't know. To the chest area? There is no mention of the cause in my papers. And eh, not exactly. I sidestepped the question and accepted acceptably acceptably and he glanced at me over his papers with a more serious expression on his face. Still, you need to keep your body healthy, so some exercise would be would do you good. We have physical therapy and such available as and such available as I said, but I don't think you really need such heavy measures. Just get some light exercise regularly. Brisk walks or even light jogs, jumping rope, that sort of thing. Swimming maybe? There's a pool here. So I was told. You were? Very good. At any rate, I'm sure you you've been told this before. You just need to take care not to overexert yourself. He wags his fingers to emphasize the point. No need really. I heard this a thousand times already. Absolutely no unnecessary risks. Take care of yourself. Okay. He goes over my papers one more time and sets them on the desk. Obviously content. Good. That's it then. Come meet me if you ever need something. I'm ushered out before I even realize it. A quick visit, indeed. I end up standing in front of the main building in the auxiliary building. Although, to my eyes, it still look one and the same. It's the first real look I get at the other students, so I watch people coming out of the school, going towards the gate or the dorms. Everyone seems to know what they are doing, are going, and I still keep thinking that most of them don't look too special for being students at a special school. Then again, neither do I. Does that make me one of them? One of us? One of us. One of us. One of... Oh, I'm sorry. Da da da. I should go somewhere too, to prevent me from getting lost. It's about dinner time, but I feel tired instead of hungry. The weariness in me only grows as I trudge towards the dorms, set a little way apart from the main building complex. There's a garden of sorts between the school and the dorms, shrubbery, flowers and that overbearing smell of fresh cut grass that, that fills the atmosphere. It dawns at my tired mind that the smell feels novel because I haven't been outside at all for so long. The dorm building is big and make, made of red brick, like the others. It feels way too pompous for what it is, so I push forward going inside. It takes me time, more time than necessary to fish out the key I was given from my pocket. Room 119. Despite the ornate exterior, the interior of the dorm is fairly new, functional, and boring. Just like in the main building, the halls and doors are wide to accommodate wheelchairs. The same goes for the elevators at the end of the hallways. I poke my head around the corner of the common room door. Inside, a few students are watching television. One nods and gives a quick hello before turning back to the TV. Seems like only the girls around here are sociable. I suppose it's perfectly fine with me. I climb the stairs to the upper floor. Here, here, small corridors branch off from the main hallway. Each of these minor hallways seem to have a toilet and shower, as well as four rooms. About halfway down the hall, I spy room one, 119. The nameplates on the room adjacent to mine are blank. I guess there are just two of us here. Light shines from below the floor, below the door of room 117, so I knock lightly. Hello, is anyone home? From inside, I hear a few movements, then the clicking of way more locks than I thought these doors had. After a moment, the door squeaks open. Hey, 
Hey Potter! Yay! <laughs> I'm best... Best spectacled... Whatever. Boy is standing in the doorway. He's looking at me very intently through his extremely thick eyeglasses. Who is that? Blind? No, at least not completely. Why would he have eyeglasses if he was? He leaned closer at me until our noses were almost touching. His breath stinks of garlic. His sound knocky. I'm moving into the next room. I thought I should introduce my... my. His face suddenly brightens in realization he stands back upright, thrusting his hand out in in a smile, gre smiling greeting, almost straight to my diaphragm. Oh, oh, sup dude? Name's Kenji. Oh, ah, uh, hi. I take Kenji's sweaty hand and shake it, still a little rattled by the sudden change of attitude and vehement welcome. Vehement. There were some suspicious looking people going in and out of your room earlier. It was probably my parents. Your parents? You sure? Because they could have been some other people too. You can't judge a book by its cover. He's out of place. His out of place proverb is left hanging between us awkwardly as I try to think of some way to respond. I say the chances are high enough. He shudders and makes some exaggerated hand gestures. You're a brave man, Sal. Me? I don't think I could trust the chances. The only one I trust is myself. Does that mean I shouldn't get to know you either? He thinks about this for a while. A wise decision. Damn, you're smarter than you look. Probably. What do you look like? I hope not s I hope not smart. He squints his eyes and leans closer again, but I lean backwards to dodge it. Never mind, it doesn't matter. Okay, so he's sort of blind. With that, he turns, fumbles around for a moment in search of the door handle, and shuts the door behind him. I slide the key into the lock of the do door marked 119. Bleak beige walls, white linen, a desk made of some type of flight wood. Ugly curtains. It's no one's room. Impersonal. It's my hospital room was like my hospital room was my bags are sitting at the foot of my bed looking a lot emptier than they did this morning the closet is still open stocked with my clothes also it seems that there are a number of school uniforms hanging there as well a note is pinned to the sleeve of one of the shirts hi ha hi hichi we've unpacked your things and made your bed they said that if they're, these don't fit, then you should go to the office tomorrow. If you have any problems, you can always call us. Love, Mom and Dad. Well, at least I don't have to worry about unpacking. I kind of hoped I would have. Then there would be something to do. It's still too early. I put the note down on the desktop and lie down on the bed, feeling drained. Lying there may... Ah, oh, man, I gotta work on my reading. Makes me want to read something, but I had nothing with me. I wonder if the hospital conditioned me for wanting to read whenever I had something to do. Nothing to do. The restless urge just keeps growing until I have to stand up. Maybe it's stress or something. I was pretty nervous about it before coming, and for the... Entire day today, too. I still am, I think. Damn. I had to distract myself somehow, so I won't be this unnatural all the time. Tomorrow, I'll go borrow some books from the library. Yeah, I'll do that. But for now, the bottle of medications neatly arranged on my ta table, night table catch my eye. I pick up one and shake it just to hear the content rattle inside, and then read the glued on pharmacy label. Assign a cow. Two tablets daily to stay alive. Well, that's so reassuring. <laughs> it doesn't really say that, 
but it could just as well. Oh, okay, so it doesn't really say that. I was about to say, I was like, what kind of medication is that, that they really do say two pills to stay alive? <laughs> it's kind of, kind of um, illogical to put that the patient would be really, feel really, really bad. It's kind of twisted having your life depend on medica uh, chemicals like this. I resent it a little, but what choice do I have? With a sigh, I begin my new daily rit ritual of taking the right number of pills for each from each bottle, being careful to check the correct dosages. Da da da. I lie down again, feeling hollow and uncertain. After that, I keep staring at the blank, unfamiliar ceiling for a long time. It doesn't start looking any more familiar. Not even after darkness falls and long shadows draw across my room like fingers. The sheets feel slightly more comfortable, warm, and nest-like against the chill that passes from room temperature here. That passes for room temperature here. Soon the lighter shade of darkness that is the ceiling looks like every ceiling does at night, and it becomes the only thing I recognize anymore. The night beckons me to sleep. And I feel the coldness of unfamiliarity and fear creeping up my spine once again. I keep drifting further away from the world I knew. Oh, okay, so you can save with a right click. Save, create new save state. Save. All right, guys, this is going to be the end of this episode here. I'm going to be chopping this up in 20-minute um, videos, probably. I don't know. If ones have to be longer, then that is it. But I am running short on time today because I have some things to do. I'm recording this in a one hour, over one hour session right now. So, at the e end of this, it will be around five episodes before your comments are going to get to me. I will reply to your comments, but they probably will not show up in videos until later. If this playthrough is going to be that long. I like the game so far. Even though it's considered a dating sim, I do like really well made dating sims ones that are really well made that don't feel like a dating sim so i'm going to be playing this more along with other stuff you can see one hour and two minutes like i've been playing so without further ado wave to the camera that is not there and i'll see you guys next time